Hi, I am Sean Diddy, and we are ready to start our MIU webinar. So today we're going to talk about the BA in Consciousness and Human Potential here at Maharishi International University, or MIU. This webinar will last about 45 minutes, and there is a live Q&A. So we want you to interact with us. We want you to ask your questions. Uh, let us know what you think about. Let us know, um, you know what you're planning in regard to coming to MIU campus or maybe studying online, or maybe you're just you know, trying to figure out if we might be a fit for you maybe you're just really interested in the topic of consciousness and human potential and you've decided to join us today. So you'll ask those questions on the Q&A. It's at the bottom of your screen, typically on your Zoom. And uh, again, um, Karen's answering, we're, we're answering behind the scenes as well, but uh, we will also, I'll ask some of these questions live and most of them will try to ask live to our panelists so that they can answer because chances are other people have the same question. Again, if it's a question unique to you, feel free to type that in the Q&A and our folks will um, respond to you and help you. I mentioned that you could join us on campus or online in regard to this bachelor's degree and we have a couple of options for you. This is a picture of our wonderful campus in Fairfield, Iowa. I will tell you that we are really central to the United States. And I put, uh, we have some airplanes up there showing you where you could fly into. And I love that um, uh, Dr. Travis is giggling in the background because you can fly into Burlington, which is a very small regional airport. Uh, Chicago is about uh, five hours away, depending. Um, Des Moines, about two hours. Cedar Rapids, about an hour and a half. So you can kind of see where we're located. And our admissions team, uh, when you do come to Fairfield, can help you to you know, find the, the best way to get here. Maybe you're local and you'll just drive on in and maybe you're gonna study with us online and we'll talk about how you can do that as well. If you do come to campus or if you're online, you'll learn that we are the home of consciousness-based education. We're celebrating our Jubilee. So for 50 years, MIU has really been the leader in regard to consciousness uh, meditation. We'll talk about that. I know that that's a hot topic out there in the corporate America. It's hot at uh, you know other universities. We have been practicing transcendental meditation at our university and, and all of the students and faculty practice for quite some time. And we have some experts on that here with us. If you come to campus, you're going to enjoy our wonderful uh, cafeteria and lots of restaurants in Fairfield. We specialize in organic and vegetarian meals. You have some vegan options. We're truly a campus culture with heart. We are focused on health and wellness. And if you come uh, to campus, single, dorm rooms are standard. So generally you won't have a roommate because we really want you to be able to sleep when you want to and study when you want to, but you're still going to be in a community of like-minded people. Now, when we talk about consciousness and human potential and our experts are going to get more into this, but it is an ancient wisdom with modern science. So you're, we're going to talk today a little bit about the philosophy of yoga and how we approach that. Um, and Karen, uh, Dr. Karen is really an expert on this. So she's going to talk with you about that. We'll talk about how you can accelerate your personal growth. And I think so many people wonder about transcendental meditation. We have a premier neuroscientist with us. Uh, Dr. Fred Travis is really renowned throughout the world in regard to the brain and, and how transcendental meditation can affect us. We'll talk about the latest scientific research with him about brain functioning, but we'll also then integrate that with yoga and asanas and training in Sanskrit. We'll talk about stress strategies for social transformation, because so many people, including we have Samantha on with us, she's a student, you know, people want to make the world a better place. And if that's you, definitely stay with us, because we'll also talk about how these modern perspectives on consciousness kind of come back around to these ancient uh, teachings. So again, I mentioned uh, Dr. Karen Aoki Kudera is with us. She has her PhD. She's an associate professor. She also is your program director for the BA, so she can be a, a great resource for you. Dr. Fred Travis is the chair of our Department of Maharishi Vedic Science. Um, we have Samantha on with us. She is a student, but I want to just highlight a couple of other students here. Um, we have uh, Lilith became a public relations program manager after getting this degree. Asher is a CEO and an entrepreneur. Uh, we have someone who became a senior technical account manager, and his comment was, my degree brings to light a clearer, more positive mindset at work. I've been able to make good decisions, which have led me to, um, you know, being promoted multiple times. And I think as we look at, you know, all over corporate America, 
emotional intelligence, staying calm under stress, flexibility when there are major changes like, oh, you know, a pandemic that makes your whole business go online. So these are tools. Um, Kelly actually became a psychotherapist. So uh, she's using this in a, in a very interesting way. We're going to talk again about that BA in consciousness and human potential, which is on campus. But if you do want to study online, you would then get a bachelor's in applied arts and sciences and do the specialization in consciousness and human potential. And that's available for you online and we'll we'll talk just a little bit about that if you have any questions i'm going to give you some email addresses and some contacts at the end so that you know you can make sure you get your questions answered people often ask us about tuition and the reason i'm not going to post a specific tuition is that depends on you um, your financial situation so go to miu.edu slash financial dash aid after the webinar and you can um, type in a few things and it'll give you an idea of what your tuition would be what your financial aid kind of a ballpark idea of what it would be and then if you have questions you can always reach our financial aid folks at finaid at miu.edu and as i mentioned we are an accredited university and that means you can pay your tuitions with federal student loans um, a lot of times uh, students can help you cover their tuition, their housing, their meals. Sometimes there's a little leftover for your expenses. So this is a genuine program and I think it's becoming more and more front of mind as uh, corporate America evolves. So we're so happy to have you with us and we want you to ask your questions, so please do. Now, I'm gonna turn things over to Karen because uh, Karen, I think the first question for you is just, how did you come to MIU and, and what do you do at the university and, and kind of, you know, tell us about the CHP program. And by the way, thanks for doing this. I, I know your schedule is very busy and we love getting to hang out and chat with you. So welcome. Well, thank you. And thank you for having me here. Um, so I, I came to MIU via um, Rochester, New York, where I was studying music. I finished my bachelor's degree in music performance, but I was very interested in the, um, state of consciousness that a musician goes through or goes into during the performance aspect. So I wanted to go behind the scenes and I wanted more of an in-depth approach to life. And I started my quest with meditation and learned TM right away in Rochester. And then I found out there was a university here. So I've been here for quite a while, since 2006. I got my master's degree and PhD and we called it Marshy Vedic Science. More recently, it's called Consciousness and Human Potential. And um, I'm here teaching in the field of consciousness and human potential. My main gig is the yoga philosophy course, which we can touch on later. Um, I also love teaching meditation and teaching yoga, and I lead retreats on campus. There's a lot of other things I do, but those are two of my my hats. <laughs> We're so glad. And I actually want to bring Samantha and Dr. Travis in early right now um, because we're going to go through some of the classes that are offered and just you know the lifestyle so dr travis i'll ask you first um, you have been with miu for quite some time can you tell us i know miu practices the block system we have the block system and everyone practices tm can you give us a little bit of your background and why you think miu is different than other universities out there uh thank you sean i came here in 1990 actually to be head of the brain center and look at brain changes as people practice TM. And so as you were saying, students take one course every month. And so over a semester, they take four courses, but rather than having to juggle the four courses, they can go deep into one of them. And the courses in the consciousness and human potential range from classical understanding of psychology. We have a course called Models of Human Development and just how do different thinkers look at what development is possible from Jung um, up through Erickson, up through Kohlberg, up through higher states of consciousness. And that's the range. The other courses are on the upper end. What are the higher states that are available to every human? And as uh, Dr. Karen said earlier, you know, just because these, these newer you know, podcasts and TV shows are using this more modern vernacular, this knowledge, this understanding of consciousness has been around for a while. And I, I want to pull in Samantha because Samantha, I know you attended another college um, and uh, you have come to MIU. Tell us when you got here and just a little bit about why you chose consciousness and human potential for your major. Yes. Um, so before I came here, I did five years at another university um, right out of high school. 
and I was really motivated to make a change in the world and wanted to find a way that I could be creative in that. Um, so I took on a major, a minor, a sub-major, and I was spread so thin. And I realized after five years um, <laughs> that the one thing I didn't have time for was myself. And I became drained and felt really empty inside. So I took a break or quit <laughs> and I needed that because in that little cocoon phase between then and now, I realized that I was just naturally drawn toward learning about consciousness and quantum physics and what the like connection is between everything and everyone. Um, and really realized in that time that change begins within and in order to make a positive difference in the world, I had to start with myself. So um, an ad popped up on Facebook and I saw consciousness based education and I saw the major of conscious, uh, yeah, consciousness and human potential. And when I heard that word potential, I actually teared up and I realized like that was uh, something I wanted to explore of my own and be able to share with others. So I, I, and I noticed you said, you know, sometimes people don't know exactly what they want to do. And I think, you know, in, in the U.S. society and, and Karen and Dr. Travis, feel free to step in with your comments. And I, those of you with us live, feel free to, you know, pop in with what your experiences are and what your thoughts are. But we are so ingrained to what do you do for a living? What, what are you? And I think that has changed with the great resignation. People want to be human beings, not human doings. And, and Samantha, you said, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I just knew I wanted the tools to do it well. So um, I, Karen and Dr. Travis, I see you both shaking your head. Yes. Um, Karen, do you have any thoughts on uh, maybe what, what, we, what you teach and what people learn and how it can help them going forward in careers? Yeah, so the word, the buzzword here is consciousness. And at, at first, it's like with our first courses, when we meet students, we're kind of defining it, right? What, what do we mean by it? And we, here we mean um, the essence of what we are, this experience of pure self at the source of thought. And we want you to dive in with first an experiential basis. So that's why we have everyone learning this transcendental meditation technique, because it's really been proven to be very effective for efficiently calming down the mind and taking your attention inward. And then through the process of your education here, we're gonna be supporting that growth of consciousness and supplementing your understanding with descriptions of consciousness from the ancient Vedic literature, like the Bhagavad Gita and the Yoga Sutras. So you can see that this is an ancient knowledge, but we also want you to understand the angles from modern science. What have we learned about the very practical benefits of practicing yoga and TM? Because it turns out if you, you know, water the root, as Marshi would say, water, water the root, you enjoy the fruit spontaneously. You attend to yourself and all these other areas of life spontaneously um, gain benefits. And so the tracking of those benefits is this area of modern science. And um, Fred will definitely be the, the keynote speaker for that <laughs> area. Yeah. And I think yeah. from an HR perspective, because I a lot of my studies have to do with how does this play into organizational behavior and how do we hire people who in the long term are going to give us the best return for our money. I mean, it usually is key performance indicators and what's my return on investment. So Dr. Travis, when people come out of MIU with these skills and also a TM practice, how do you see that integrating uh, in regard to to their careers and, and probably their life in general. It integrates in that the brain is the interface between us and the world. And if the brain is worried, anxious, caught up in small problems, that's what it's going to see around it. It's going to see fragmented activity. It's not going to see the big picture. What happens with the teaching structure here at MIU, with the experience of transcendental meditation twice a day, people begin to see a larger part of the world around them. The brain becomes more integrated and you begin to be able to put the part into context of the whole. I think that's the main difference of MIU. Any other place you can go and get all the details you need about everything there is on earth. And that's what you usually get in school. But how many schools say, now stop thinking and experience the being which is underlying the thought. Experience who you are, because we're not our thoughts. They're always changing. We're not our material possessions that are always either increasing or decreasing. Experience who you are fundamentally, and then you have a different perspective. So you come out of MIU, you go back into the same world, but you see it differently. 
You don't see it as a succession of fragmented parts issues, but rather you see it as a flow. You see it as a larger picture unfolding. You can transfer up to 90 credits depending on how uh, your degree works if you're doing the Bachelor of Applied Arts and Sciences but you'll need to add the 32 credits of the CHP if you're online. And it gets a little complicated for me to explain to you on the webinar. So if you have questions, you can. I'm going to give you some emails at the end and you can talk about that and how you can transfer in credits. And also um, Dr. Karen is really good about talking with you about you know, a BA and how you might finish that. But Samantha, I wanna ask you, Dr. Travis just said, sometimes we, we we grow and we change. And I think a lot of us who have transferred from other universities experienced maybe the big university and the party culture. And I know MIU has, there's definitely a, a great social network there, but you said, you know, you kind of like the quiet part. So tell us a little bit about why you feel like MIU is a fit for you personally and, and how you want to create a community. Yeah, um, something that you said, uh, Dr. Travis, that really um, sparked something in me was just reflecting on how within each class we take um, time to meditate uh, after each lesson. And that integration is so important and vital to being able to take that to, um, well, one, to be able to transition into the next thing that we're doing without losing it and to, to like really like let it digest within us and come back to ourselves. Um, and then when you leave class, uh, everyone just kind of has this camaraderie of uh, being here together and supporting one another. Um, and it's really interesting because I've never been somewhere else where I can like look into a room of people just with so much respect that everyone is here for their own personal development and to share their wisdom and it's so inspiring to be around just so many people on that trajectory whether it's um you know because there's so many facets to it and there's just that commonality of wanting to be uh the best we can all be so I just love that and there's so much to learn from everyone here. I think that's so many great points. And we're seeing some questions come through um, about how does this integrate with a particular uh, path? I know someone just asked about working in healthcare and how would this integrate? So I think um, Dr. Karen, actually all, all three of you can weigh in on your experiences from different places. In order to get through this degree, um, you'll finish your general requirements for a bachelor's degree. And then there are 52 credits of that bachelor's degree that include 32 credits of the required courses for consciousness and human potential, and then at least 20 from the elective courses. And we're referring to the on-campus degree program. If you do the online program, it's part of the 32 credits. But I wanted to just pop up some courses and, and folks at home, you can, uh, ask questions about these, but let's start with the required courses, and then I'm going to come back in and put up some of the electives. Um, and I know, Samantha, you have taken courses with both Dr. Karen and um, Dr. Travis. So, Karen, can you maybe talk about one or two of the required courses and how that applies to the student and, and what it entails? So, um, Jacqueline, just I'm going to address your question on the Q&A <laughs> with this point, because you're asking, um, we have a question from Jacqueline. So um, attending to the point on yoga, which we do teach, we have a course on yoga. Um, she says yoga is associated with, um, how is yoga associated with meditation? I always saw it more as a strength of, or a source of strength conditioning and stretching. And here at this university, we're really linking yoga with an experience of consciousness. And so we're going to use the original definition of yoga, meaning union. So what's what's being um, brought into union? Well, the individual self, the experience of the individual self um, in conjunction or coming into union with transcendental awareness or consciousness and in a grander scope. Um, so yes, we still also have the yoga asana series and we'll teach you like a series of yoga postures and the deep breathing that we call pranayam, but our primary aim with the yoga class is to have, to have you experience the source of consciousness, also con called pure being, pure awareness, the self. And um, from that basis, then we want to bring you into the knowledge of, let's say, the yogic texts. How does the yoga sutras describe yoga? 
Um, and then we look at the Bhagavad Gita. How is yoga, the practice of yoga connected with Dharma or life force um, and your life purpose? So that's a little bit on the MVS 370. I could add one thing on uh, yoga. Uh, yes. Yes. In direct answer to your question, the yoga asana is a preparation for deep transcending. So it's preparing for meditation. Uh, a PhD student, Sonia Gobech, actually looked at the effect of practicing yoga asanas uh, over one month compared to MIU students who were practicing TM but not the yoga asanas regularly. And what she found is that people practicing yoga asanas reported they were happier and their experiences during meditation were deeper more experiences of transpersonal self and transpersonal qualities. Thank you, Karen. All right. And I think from a, because I'll step over with the PhD in management corporate side of it, I think that we have been separating our, our, our bodies from our minds for many years. And we've been kind of taught to do that. And I think again, in light of what's been going on in corporate America, people are now saying, wait a minute, I, I need to connect my body with my mind. And, and I know Karen, you can elaborate more on how that, that could play into the career workplace and, and Dr. Travis as well. And Samantha, do you have a, a comment? Because you, it's my understanding, you had not heard of Transcendental Meditation prior to coming to MIU, right? How, um, how is that, has it affected your life? Yeah, a lot. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because it's like I try to stay away from accrediting everything um, to that. <laughs> but at the same time, um, I tried to meditate before I came here and I tried to do oh, I did do yoga. I loved it. Um, it was just different. And um, when I started doing TM, uh, I really was able to put focus on the obstacles that I had between myself and feeling really fulfilled. Um, I could name a few like perfectionism and procrastination and being diagnosed with ADD. And I think a lot of people are very scattered in their mind. Um, so TM really brought a more focused awareness um, of just being able to have um, basically everything I wanted to do with more confidence. It was so much easier, like truly effortless to feel fulfilled and find success. Um, and then the yoga is just completely different as well because um, within it you're transcending sometimes and if you're not you're having something come up to the surface that's been lodged in our bodies for so long and our body holds so much intelligence and so much um, past stress that we have to resolve so when I took the course with Karen it was my second class here I just had so much transformation happen in that class because there was just release, release, release of things that have been stored for years. And Karen, I know you're a lot more hands-on um, than I think I've, I've experienced. Well, let's see, I, I'm at my PhD level. So I've gone to six universities and colleges um, and, and I've gotten to see Karen in action. And Karen, you and your team really do spend time with your students, talk to your students. Can you talk a little bit about what you see as people come into MIU, maybe uh how you think the degree is a good fit for people and, and how people grow yeah so it, on campus um it's a slightly different demographic than the online chips so the on campus tends to be uh first time degree seekers but they've taken time away after high school they've been in a job and they're coming for consciousness and human potential not for a degree experience but for an experience of connection something real and so the nice thing about the on-campus offering is that there's a lot of contact with the teacher. It's almost like each month is this course of transformation. And I've, I've listened to my students um, after a semester or two, they just find these themes of their life finally being addressed, and then they can just really grow in very meaningful ways. And uh, you know, if I teach a course on yoga, that's like three and a half weeks together every day, four hours where we're practicing yoga, then analyzing the mechanics of practice, then discussing, you know, the experiential aspect. And, and Samantha mentioned how there's a lot of purification. Um, like as you open up, as you dive within, there's also a response of releasing stress that's stored in the physiology. So all that really benefits from a nurturing environment in a community. Um, so oftentimes we're a teacher, but we're also there as almost like course leaders um, in the sense of like a yoga retreat. And 
I think I, did I miss any questions? <laughs> I, I think you totally covered right. it. And I actually uh, interviewed a student earlier who's in this degree program. And she said, it's almost like going to camp because you spend <laughs> four weeks with this group and then you get a full three day weekend off. And then you get a new kind of mix up of the group and, uh, and you build these communities. And I, I think um, I'm going to put up, uh, because there are modules, it's my understanding. So folks can choose, um, from these elective courses, so the ones that I have listed, I'm guessing the EEG Brain and Enlightenment course is taught by Dr. Travis. <laughs> Good uh, intuition. <laughs> uh, can you? And I think so many of us, because now meditation is such a big deal, um, you actually have a lab, and students can can have an EEG done. Is that right? Will you explain that a little bit for those of us who don't know what it is? Yes, yeah, so there's actually two questions embedded here. First, EEG, electroencephalography, it looks at the brainwave activity. While you're doing tasks, while you're meditating, while you're just eyes closed rest. And again, the brain is the interface between you and the world. So we look at how this interface changes in our students. So students come in as freshmen, uh, we record their EEG while they're doing computer tasks, meditating, then again as seniors. And what we find, we have two papers we published on this, is their brain becomes more integrated, called brain integration. And with that, they're happier, they're better able to cope with stress, uh, they have a clearer vision of where they want to go. In terms of that course you brought up, it's a, it's a fun course because you have a bunch of freshmen in the class, sophomores, you teach them how to record EEG, how to put sensors on people's heads, how to record, how to analyze EEG, that's the first two weeks. The last two weeks, you actually conduct a study. You actually think of what's a question that's important to me that physiological measures could do, and you actually go out and do that. <laughs> Samantha was part of a group that was looking at social entanglement. Physics talks about entanglement of particles, particles that have interacted become entangled on a quantum mechanical level. They move apart in relative space, but they remain entangled at the level of the quantum field. So she was asking, is there social entanglement? And so the people that she interacts with more, is she somehow more connected with those people than people that are just casual friends? And this is um, what we do. It's, it's a lot of fun and the students wake up to the power of science to address very cutting edge questions. This is, again, I think so many people, there are questions coming up and we're trying to answer them um, both behind the scenes. And so the Q&A is going, but we're also answering them uh, live on camera. And if we do somehow miss your question or you have more questions when this is over with, we're going to give you ways to reach us. And we also do follow up uh, if you need some more information. We're happy to do that. Coming back to these modules, because there are a few of them, and the first one I want to address is the self-development module. And Dr. Karen, we had talked about um, a, a couple of students really enjoyed like the diet, digestion, and nutrition class, which is part of Ayurveda, and then also Maharishi self-pulse reading. I think these are new to a lot of people. What, what are some of these classes? Yeah, so we're pulling, um, we're actually allowing some of our students to take these courses from Ayurveda, the holistic healthcare system that's also based in consciousness fundamentally, but includes a lot more practical information about how to um, conduct your daily routine and um, maintain a diet that's, that's in tune with, you could say, the laws of nature is one of our terms, with the natural cycles of time and of the seasons. And there's some students who really want to get into that sort of lifestyle. They're really excited not only to change their lifestyle habits, but to learn more about the practical method by which you can assess and diagnose your state of balance or imbalance. So I've had some students head into that module and actually end up with a double major situation where they're doing both consciousness and human potential along with Ayurveda. So they're very symbiotic compatible degree programs. Thank you. And again, I want to be clear that those are um, these are electives, so you won't have to take all of those classes. You can choose from those classes. And again, the VEDA module is another one where these are electives. Um, I think even five years ago, if I would say, oh, there's a class on Sanskrit, people would say, hmm. And now I have so many, I'm in New York City right now, and I have so many friends saying, wait, you can learn Sanskrit because People are listening to Sanskrit. People are, you know, have learned it from their yoga practice. Uh, Karen, I know this is one of your 
your specialties. Can you explain um, just a little bit about the reading of the Vedic literature, Sanskrit, and how you see this becoming more and more important today, 2022, going forward? Yeah, this I would say is um, definitely like a specialty that you can get into. It's another, you could say, technique in that you're learning how to uh, re read the sounds of Sanskrit, which is considered a very powerful um, system of sound. I hesitate to say language because yes, it has been used as a system of language, but in, in the way we're using it, we have these Vedic texts that are written in the ancient Sanskrit language with the script, and we have the students learn how to read the text and um, has a very um, positive effect on, on brain functioning, but also on inner experience. So actually, while you're reciting in Sanskrit, you can have very deep experiences of the inner self, including perception, subtle perception. And um, some students get so much into it that they take multiple classes on this and actually specialize in specific areas of the huge collection of Vedic literature. And then they keep a log of their experiences. You can say that this is a supplementary to practicing transcendental meditation, but it's another way to just um, get to know more of our procedures for accelerating growth of what we call higher states or enlightenment. And I know like Samantha really liked reading Sanskrit. <laughs> so, Samantha, tell us about that because I can't imagine even five years ago, you were thinking, oh, I think I'll go learn to read Sanskrit. <laughs> what was it like and, and why did you like it? Oh yeah, great question. Um, so when I took the first course on it, I just fell in love with um, the shapes of the letters and the sounds and just like the fundamentals of it. Um, and then through practicing and um, some personal focus on that, um, reading the different texts and uh, expressions, it was an experience. Like it's, um, it's subtle, but it's also profound and uh, very personal. So yeah, it's just very exciting. And as a, a language, it's something that I think, you know, like you said, most people don't think, oh, I'm going to uh, learn that eventually. But once you do, it's something that I think a lot of people are really inspired to continue with. I love it. And again, another one of the modules, and again, these are uh, classes that are electives, but you could actually learn to become a, a TM teacher if you wanted to. Um, Karen, can you address that and how it might work with the degree or is this something people add on generally after the BA? Well, for the teacher training, um, you'd wanna be quite comfortable and at home with the whole system of knowledge. And not just that you're loving the TM program, but that you wanna be able to be a change maker by maybe going into a community or a school system and teaching the transcendental meditation technique. So we offer the teacher training course. It's, it's got its own application process. So I consider it something to do maybe in your senior year, we've had that happen. And right now we're just launching our first digital course offering of the teacher training. Typically you'd actually have to go away for five and a half months. It was quite an ordeal, <laughs> but um, we're gonna start with this digital TTC program. So yeah, if you have interest in being a meditation teacher, um, we should talk more about that. <laughs> Good, yes. And again, over 600 studies uh, currently and more being done uh, in regard to uh, transcendental meditation in regard to PTSD, emotional intelligence, blood pressure. We could go on and on, but I know we have limited time here, so we want to make sure we get your questions answered. Um, I do want to just address uh, with Dr. Travis, the idea of TM, transcendental meditation, if people haven't heard of, of it, uh, there are studies that I know you really do some focus on aging and personal development for peak performance. We've even done some studies that have to do with uh, secondary or graduate degrees and how people uh, actually are more able to learn. Can you touch on a little bit of how does TM play into making this degree important going forward, not just while you're in college, but later? That's such a critical question. It's because what TM is doing is not teaching you anything specific, how to focus or how to problem solve or how to plan your time. But what it's doing, it's making you more awake, more alert, more quiet, more expanded, so that you're focusing, you're problem solving, your, your skills are put in a larger context. And you begin to 
able to pick up the information because there's not the stress, the worry, the anxiety. What TM is doing is it's taking the awareness from the mind, which is filled with thoughts, and it's allowing the mind to settle down until it becomes completely silent and awake. It's a silence which is always there, but usually covered up by ongoing activity. Then when you come out of meditation, you bring some of that with you. You're more calm, you're more settled, you're more expanded inside. TM takes you to a fourth major state of consciousness. It's not altered waking, it's not sleep. It's a whole different state called restful alertness. Physiologically, what we see is a whole stress response system is turned down. So in the afternoon, you've had a hard day in class and you've been struggling with some math problems. You sit down, close your eyes, and the whole physiology is just at a more rested, more alert level. And that's what it's doing. And it's bringing that value of restful alertness out into the daily activity. And that's what I think is a main driver of what Samantha was saying, of what everyone experiences as they practice TM. And that helps wherever you go, business, art, science, uh, athletics. It's so true. And Karen, you have such a great background because you have this background as a traveling professional musician, but you also understand business. And, and can you tell us a little bit uh, we talked about you and Dr. Travis, but about the instructors in this program and maybe a, a little touch on what they bring to the classes and what their backgrounds are. Oh, in our department, we have, um, yeah, I think that the common element, of course, is just love of meditation, and attending to the self, but practically speaking, we have different backgrounds. So mine is in music performance, um, but we've got well, like Tom Eganis, who's a Sanskrit um, grammarian, he was even able to translate texts. Um, but as a whole, I would say we're able to offer a very tight theoretical model for explaining consciousness. There's that sort of um, intellectual approach to understanding and analyzing consciousness. That's the flavor of our department. Um, but other than that, I feel like we're also like mentors in the sense of we all practice yoga and meditation and we also all know how to lead retreats. So there's that component of mentoring so that we're not just philosophers. <laughs> that makes any sense, but. Um, it does. And we're going to keep answering the questions that you're asking, uh, but if you do have additional questions, we want you to know you can always reach out to our admissions team. There they are. Uh, and also that uh, we do have replays of some previous webinars. So if you go to miu.edu slash webinars, because people have, have popped up a few questions about um, student loans. And yes, we are an accredited university, so you can get student loans. But if you have specific questions, there's a replay there. Um, you can just click replays and there is a financial aid webinar and there's also a financial aid's email address. We also do more in-depth one-on-one visits if you go to the top of the MIU page. And then also the chatters are available if you go to miu.edu. And I know someone asked me, um, when, uh, or all of us behind the scenes, the next entry is in August. Uh, so again, you can, you'll want to apply now just to kind of get yourself ready to go. An application is not an absolute, you must attend. What an application does is starts the process. So if you decide the fall entry doesn't work for you, we actually have another spring entry for uh, on campus and online. So you could defer, you can wait down the road if you decide it just doesn't work for you, um, we understand. But what we really want to do is see if it does work for you and answer your questions. So um, Samantha, I have a, a question. I, there are several people online with us and I'm sure they're wondering, okay, is, is MIU for me? Um, and let's talk about the on-campus because you've moved to Fairfield. If there's somebody out there and they, they're wondering, okay, why would I move to Fairfield? Will this really make my life any better if I if I try this. Do you do you have anything to say to somebody who's kind of, I guess, on the fence wondering if they should try it? Yeah, I feel like if there's an intuitional um, pull toward that, then it's really worth following. For me, I felt very spread thin and just scattered, like I said, um, and just like very overstimulated by the external before I came here. Um, and then upon arriving and ever since, I feel like I just have more attention on myself from within, like rooted in being. So therefore the vertical access of attention is more 
open than the horizontal, which is really nice because it's not like I'm, you know, disconnected from the world or anything like that, but more so I can reel it back into myself and really stay grounded and really stay present with um, anything that comes up in life. And it's been a very beautiful journey since being here to like see just, we talked about natural law a little bit. And when we have the support of nature, what can come from that? Uh, I just highly recommend it, especially if you are ready to just kind of prioritize your own personal development and learning. Sam, you used that phrase of vertical attention and horizontal attention. That was magnificent. I wonder if you could just expand on that a bit. Yeah. Um, so the way I see it is like the vertical or the horizontal plane just being very uh, linear and uh, past, present, and future, but mostly past and future. I just that, that's where that anxiety comes from. And um, just feeling like unstable a lot of the times. And now that vertical access of like, you know, we all have a connection to something beyond ourselves, something greater, um, whether we look at it from the science perspective of like quantum entanglement or the, you know, unified field or more of a spiritual look at it, a higher self. And it's really being able to hear the impulses from within. Okay, I love wonderful. that that's how classes go, that you just engaged your student and asked, Rather than speaking at students, I have found that MIU instructors allow students to learn at their own pace and for themselves within reason. And, and Karen, I see you shaking your head as well. And, and Dr. Travis, Karen, we have just a couple of minutes, but I, I know people are wondering what your comments are as far as, you know, what, what reason do you give if somebody's saying, well, should I try it? What do you think, um, Dr. Travis? Try it if that's what you're thinking. What Sam said was so critical is there's that little intuition inside because that's where the important ideas come from. They're not on the noisy surface level, the intellectual questioning should I and pros and cons and plus and minuses. It's on that very quiet level. And that's where you are connected to your universal self. So come, you can, uh, because it's a block system, come for one course. And what you'll find is there's a churning of consciousness in the classroom. The, I, I say something, the student comes back with a perspective that I've never heard before. And it makes me look at that same object in a different way. And you get this churning of knowledge. And I thoroughly enjoy teaching. I've been here for 32 years. And every day when I'm teaching, I'm looking forward. What will we come up with next? It's a very special place. Can I just say, I've never enjoyed going to a class as much as I do here. Like it's truly an honor to be in class with professors that are here. Thank you. I think we call that living knowledge, right? Because we're always discovering together. And the, the thing about consciousness is just so um, abstract and expanded, but it becomes more concrete with meditation and yoga. At the same time, there's always new discoveries about it and how, the expressions of it. Um, if you're on the fence, I guess there's two ways to address that. Are you on the fence about online or on campus? Um, I've been finding I speak about three or four times a week with prospective students. And so if they're on the fence, don't worry, start online. You know, let this knowledge come to you and see the transform transformation that takes place in your life. And then there's the option of always switching to on, camp on campus if you really wanted to try a semester or two here. That's been happening. Um, and there's some advantages to being on campus. One of them is that it's easier to learn the more advanced techniques like the TM City program. But um, all that stuff, we can work one-on-one um, -on -one with you to just make sure that we can kind of customize the package of consciousness that you need for your situation. And as for on campus, we might be beginning the Visitors Weekend series again soon, hopefully. We used to do that. People would come and visit us for a weekend. Good. And we do, of course, have the online version of Visitors Weekend right now, too. But again, we can always work out a visit with you if you're interested in applying. And again, we'd love to have you apply so that we can be in touch with you. You can uh, work out whether it's for online or on campus. There's where that application button is at the top of miu.edu. Um, again, those live chatters will always be at the bottom of that screen. Um, and our website is always available for you, miu.edu. Uh, we have enjoyed this time with you. Again, Dr. 
Dr. Travis, uh, Dr. Karen, and Samantha have been wonderful from our side. All of you joining us literally from all around the world. We're so happy to have you with us. And whether you join us for the Bachelors in Consciousness and Human Potential on campus or the BOSS, the Bachelors of Applied Arts and Sciences with a concentration in CHP, Consciousness and Human Potential online, uh, online or on campus. We're a great community and we would love to have you be a part of it. So thanks for joining us. MIU is a nonprofit university accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. Financial aid is available for most students.